Hey there, Slashaholics. Before we start tonight, I want to say a big thank you to all the patrons of this channel, because without them, the channel would simply not exist. So, a very big thank you to Jay Gardner, Michael Clark, The Jersey Devil, Jason Epstein, Alex Vanover, Carl of Cthulhu, Chris Dozier, Cinerenic CAX, EXC3LS10R84, Gucci Solo, Iron Alexa, Jackson Smith, Jordan Nicholson, Callie Gamer Girl 82, Catherine McClear, Katie Sabo, Kodo Bukia, Transformers Bishoho, Marshall Jenkins, Morgan Cherney, Nick Valcarve, Peyton Loeb, William Schaefer, Yusuf McRae, Alvaro M., Jacob Hill, Jeremy Wilson, Casey Hawaii, Liam Anderson, Scar, Donovan Shelton, EGSCW, Landon Turner, Mr. D. Authier, Nick, and Serpent Thrope. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate you. And if anybody listening would like to help support the channel to keep it going and growing for years to come, please consider joining our Patreon, making a PayPal or Cash App donation, or even ordering a Cameo video. All the information and links to do any of these is in the description and pinned comment below. We can't monetize the channel here on YouTube, so we really depend on slashaholics like you to keep the channel going. Thank you all so much, and please enjoy tonight's narration of Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, the fan novelization by Jeremy Terry. Chapter 16, Battle at the Diner. It's crazy how quickly things can change. Jessica mused as she sprinted across Joey B's parking lot towards the illusory lying safety of the diner. A station full of armed men couldn't keep her pursuers from her. How could a diner full of civilians be any better? Look at me, an hour ago I would have seen this man running beside me locked up for the rest of my life. Now we are going to get our baby together. I can't believe the things he did back at the house and at the sheriff's office. He put himself in harm's way for me without a second thought. Maybe he has changed. Stephen reached the glass front door and burst into Joey B's with Jessica right behind him. All eyes turned to them as they stopped in front of the cash register where Vicky stood staring. Where's the baby? Jessica asked. Vicky glanced from her friend to the wanted man beside her, confusion written across her pretty face. Jess, what the hell? She's fine. Jessica gripped Vicky's hand hard. Where is Stephanie? She's in the back. What's wrong? Jessica moved to her left, headed for the pass-through that led behind the counter, but halted when Joey stepped in the way. A pistol aimed at her and Stephen. Shelby and Ward stood behind her, looking as amped up as Jessica felt. Hold it right there, Joey said. Don't move a muscle, either of you. Joey, please shut up! Joey shouted, her cheeks going as red as her hair. You're with him. Nobody's going to touch that little ray of sunshine. Pookie, call the station. I'm on it, Shelby said, stepping down the hall into the kitchen to lift the phone receiver from its cradle. He placed it to his ear and frowned. Holy shit, the line is dead, love. Son of a bitch, Joey said. Ward, see what the hell is going on over there at the station? Stephen raised a hand to block Ward's path to the front door, and Joey pivoted the gun towards his heart. Stephen lowered his hand, but not his gaze. You can't let him go over there. Joey, he'll get killed. A wild light glinted in Joey's eyes, and Jessica thought she saw the older woman's finger tighter on the gun's trigger. Shut up, Joey shouted. Ward, move your ass now. Ward glanced to the door and hesitated. Ma, he just... Don't be a little bitch, son, Joey growled. Don't make me go up the side of your head with my fist. Hold on, sweet thing, Shelby said as he stepped back out of the hallway with the pistol clutched in his hands. He tossed it to Ward, who caught it deftly. I got something to fix this situation. A huge grin spread across the young man's face as he stuffed the gun into the front of his pants. He took a step forward and Joey grabbed his arm. She glanced down at the pistol, pointing at his groin with a raised eyebrow. Honey, watch the willy. Come on, Ma, Ward said, visibly deflated. He stepped out from behind the counter, and Stephen shook his head at him. Ward, please don't, Stephen said. 
Joey twitched her pistol's barrel up towards Stephen's face. Shut up. Keep your hands where I can see them. Ward looked back to his mother and then to Jessica and Stephen. He shrugged and walked outside. Ward felt like the ultimate badass. He stepped off the sidewalk onto the cracked asphalt parking lot, twirling his pistol on one finger. He was Robocop taking out a cop killer. He was Dirty Harry telling a scumbag to make his day. He was Mother effin' Chuck Norris making everyone his bitch. He aimed the pistol right, left, imagining he stood beside Doc Holliday in the Earps behind the OK Corral. He turned back to the parking lot and froze as a shape materialized out of the night. The man strode from the woods on the far side of the road, headed straight at Ward. He looked filthy as if he had been rolling around in the mud. Was this man the person Stephen and Jessica was running from? Did he have something to do with the phones being out? Ward gripped his pistol tighter, taking courage from its lethal weight. No one could mess with him when he had it. He started walking forward to meet the stranger. <laughs> Jessica glanced at the clock on the wall over the service window and grimaced. How long had they been standing there arguing with the crass, vulgar woman? Two minutes too long by Jessica's estimate. Who did Joey think she was keeping her baby from her? Jessica slammed her hands down on the counter, her patience gone. Joey, please, just give me my baby and we'll go. The gun swayed in Jessica's direction. Shut up. You're with the fucking felon. Okay, hey now, babe, Shelby said. Watch the language. Fuck off, Pookie, Joey said, looking away from Stephen and Jessica for the briefest second. Jessica took her chance. She lunged across the counter and grabbed Joey's pistol, trying to yank it from her hands. Joey twisted away, her fingers inadvertently squeezing the gun's trigger. The pop of the pistol as it fired seemed small among the chaos. The bullet passed half an inch over Shelby's baseball cap and struck a metal box mounted high on the hallway wall. Sparks flew, the lights flickered, and then the lights went out, leaving the diner bathed in darkness. A second later, emergency lights came to fitful light, spreading small pools of illumination over the stunned group. No one moved for a moment, as the smell of ozone and cordite filled the air. Jesus, Jessica thought. Someone could have died. It appeared from the look in Joey's eyes that she had come to the same conclusion, and she was livid. Now look what you fucking done, Joey shouted. Jessica matched her, furious that she was being denied access to her child. Give me the baby, Joey. Fuck you. And just like that, Jessica had enough. She reached for the closest object at hand, a metal sugar container, and smashed it against the side of Joey's head. Joey crumpled to the floor behind the counter and was still. Sorry, Jessica said to Shelby. As he glared at her, she shrugged. What was a girl to do? <laughs> Ward wasn't feeling so tough anymore. The man coming at him didn't seem to even see the pistol in his hand. The man just came on, his dead eyes seeming to see straight through Ward to his target inside the diner. Hold it right there, pal, Ward said. The man kept coming. He was ten feet away and closing. Ward felt a twinge of fear run down his spine, and he aimed his gun at the man's chest. He was five feet away. Stop! Ward squeaked. I mean it! The man reached out, quick as a snake, and grabbed Ward's wrist in a vice-like grip. He twisted and pushed, and Ward's world filled with agony. As his forearm exploded, bones erupted from flesh, blood splattered the parking lot like rain. Ward looked at his maiming, at the pistol that dangled useless from disconnected fingers, and opened his mouth to scream. His killer didn't give him time. He rammed Ward's ruined arm towards his face. The jagged bone slid between teeth to pierce the soft meat of his throat. Blood flooded his mouth, 
choking him, drowning him in his own fluids. Ward gagged, his vision blurred, and then he felt himself thrown through the air impossibly far. He looked past his jutting elbow to the fast approaching brick wall beside the diner's entrance and had time for one last thought. I should have listened to Stephen. Something large hit the outside wall hard enough to rattle the windows, and then the glass front door shattered. Jessica looked up and gasped as Campbell strode in. He was much changed. No longer resembling the man she once thought she loved, this man was ghastly, hideous, as if he lived among dead things, and rutted in their decay. She felt Stephen's hand on her arm pulling her away. They turned and vaulted the counter as a male customer jumped up from his booth and grabbed Campbell's lapel. Campbell broke the Good Samaritan's wrist as easy as snapping a toothpick and then threw him into the counter. Wood splintered and the Samaritan collapsed to the floor with his brains oozing from his broken forehead. Beside her, Stephen drew his pistol and began to fire, hitting Campbell in the chest and shoulder. Vicky came up beside Stephen, a double-barreled shotgun she'd snatched from beneath the counter clutched in her hands. She fired both barrels, blowing chunks from Campbell's chest. He turned to glare at her. He's unstoppable, Jessica thought. She spun on her heel and fled down the hallway towards the rear storage room. She had to get to Stephanie, had to get her out and away from the demon that wore other people's faces. She heard footsteps right behind her, felt Stephen's presence. Could she really depend on him? She was starting to believe she could. Joey stumbled to her feet, drawn out of unconsciousness by the staccato music of gunfire. She looked to her left, saw her pookie, her best friend being menaced by a bloody man. Was this the monster Jessica and the felon had warned Ward about? Well, fuck him and the horse he rode in on. He wasn't going to take anything from her. Pookie! She yelled as she bent over to pick up her dropped pistol. She tossed it to him, and he caught it deftly. He aimed, pulled the trigger. The bullet hit the monster in the sternum. It didn't even slow him down. Oh, shit! Shelby shouted as Monster Man lifted him over his head and bore him towards the kitchen. Panic flooded Joey. Memories filled her mind. A secret conversation held under the moonlight behind the old high school. I'll be your person if you don't find someone else. You're my best friend, and I love you. I know it isn't what you have in mind, but it would be better than being alone, right? It had been better. So much more than that. True love had grown between them a bond closer than anyone could have hoped for. Sure, their relationship was different than other married couples, but who cared? People called her a beard wife. So what? So what if she had started out that way? Everyone else could go to hell. They had been enough for each other. Shelby had even had a child with her, a child conceived with their love. He was her whole world, and she would be damned if she was going to let anyone or anything take that away from her. Joey charged forward, grabbed Shelby's legs, and tried to pull him free. It was like playing tug-of-war with Arnold. The monster forced Shelby's head down towards the bubbling fryer. Shelby braced his hands on the counter beside the cooker, but his strength did no more than Joey's. With a final cry, Shelby's head sunk beneath the roiling oil. He kicked frantically, twisted, but the monster held on. Joey smelled cooking meat and gagged. Pookie is cooking, my Pookie! She hammered on the monster's head with her fist. It did no good. She grabbed a handful of his hair and yanked. The monster jerked one arm back without even glancing at her. His elbow struck her mouth. The sound inside her head was like the shattering of a piece of fine china dropped on the floor. The pain was mind-numbing. Joey fell to the ground and stared up through a red film at Shelby's legs. They weren't kicking anymore. The monster pulled her pookie from the grease and she would have screamed if she could. 
He didn't look like Shelby anymore. Everything that was him had been burned away, leaving one open red wound that stretched from the crown of his head to the nape of his neck. The monster tossed him onto the stovetop and walked past her out of the kitchen. Bloody tears rolled down her misshapen face to pull beneath her head. Oh, Pookie, she thought. Oh, my sweet little man, oh, how I loved you. A single sneakered foot dangled over the edge of the stove over her. She wanted to hold it, wanted to touch a part of him. She tried to lift one hand. It raised an inch and then fell back to earth. Joey took one last shuddering breath and breathed no more. Jessica caught sight of a familiar blanket sticking out of a wooden crate near the diner's back door. She ran to it and froze. The crate was empty. She reached down with shaking hands and removed the blanket one by one as if Stephanie could be hiding under one. Surprise, Mommy, here I am. Aren't I a good girl? She pulled another blanket out and found there was a surprise beneath. A single sheet of notebook paper lay there. She picked it up and read the words printed in neat, thin strokes. I have your baby. Come to the Voorhees' house alone, Duke. Jessica, Stephen called from behind her. What's wrong? Come alone. She stuffed the note back into the crate, feeling a pang of guilt at the course of action she must take. Would Stephen be angry when he found out? Jessica! Closer now. She couldn't let him find the note. She spun around to face him, letting her desperation show. Stephanie isn't here. She's gone. Fear widened Stephen's eyes, fear for the child he had only just met. Jessica felt a stirring of love for the man. Maybe Vicky moved her, he asked hopefully. Jessica walked to the front of the storeroom and leaned against a painted over window in the wall beside the storeroom door. She opened her mouth to speak and words turned to screams as the window broke and Campbell's upper body came through. Jessica twisted to flee and was stopped as his powerful arms wrapped around her and started to drag her through. Let her go, you bastard! Stephen shouted. He tore at fingers, beat on arms and head. The pressure didn't let up. Her shoulder and head were through the opening. She felt clammy fingers on her face, trying to pry her mouth open. The roar of the shotgun was dynamite. The shot hit Campbell low in the legs, and he released Jessica and turned to face Vicky. She aimed higher and fired again. The buckshot hit Campbell in the cheek, blowing the left side of his face open. Bits of teeth and bloody bone peppered Jessica and Stephen, and they cried out. Campbell growled, pushing himself off the wall, moving towards Vicky. Vicky dropped the empty shotgun, looked around and picked up a four-foot length of rebar that Joey had discarded in the corner for a long-forgotten reason. Vicky looked like an Amazon warrior as she hefted the makeshift spear over her shoulder and loosed a shout. She ran forward and rammed the metal deep into Campbell's stomach, forcing him back against the wall. He looked down and then smiled up at Vicky. It was the single most horrible grin she had ever seen. He reached out, still so fast in spite of all the damage he had sustained, and gripped her shoulders. He yanked her towards him, impaling her on the piece of rebar jetting from him. Go to hell, Vicky spat, coughing bright red blood into his face. The grin widened, becoming a leer. He raised his hands to grab the sides of her head and began to squeeze. There was a loud pop and a geyser of gore and brains fountain from Vicky's hair. Vicky, no! Jessica screamed. Campbell released her and she fell to the floor at his feet. Just one more victim in a long line of them. Stephen stepped into the doorway, putting himself between Campbell and Jessica. The two men eyed each other for a moment, and then Campbell went limp and collapsed to the floor beside the dead waitress. Jessica watched Campbell for a long moment and then went down on one knee beside Vicky. She brushed one finger along her childhood friend's cheek. God damn it, Vic, she breathed. 
Stephen put a comforting hand on her shoulder and then strode past her down the short hall. I'm going to see if there's still anyone alive that needs help, he said. Jess, you should come with me. You shouldn't hang here beside Robert. Jessica nodded. I just need a minute. I'll be right behind you. Okay, Stephen said. He squeezed her gently and then walked away. I'm sorry, Stephen, she thought, as she pulled Vicky's keys from her apron pocket and jogged through the storeroom and out the back door. I don't have a choice. Vicky's battered old truck was parked near the dumpsters at the end of the row. Jessica ran to it and jumped inside, cranking the engine. She left rubber on the road as she peeled out of the parking lot out onto the road. Stephen's efforts were in vain. Campbell had been far too thorough with his work. He was leaning down to close the Good Samaritan's eyes when he heard the truck engine groan to life. He stood and ran outside in time to see its red taillights speeding away along the asphalt. Jessica, wait! She didn't slow. He watched her until she vanished behind a hill and then ran back inside. Why had she left him? What had happened? He ran through the dining area, down the hall, past the kitchen. Campbell hadn't moved. He stepped over him and Vicky into the storeroom and came to a stop beside Stephanie's makeshift bed. There was a white piece of paper inside. He picked it up and read the words. That son of a bitch, he thought, as he crumpled the note and threw it to the floor. Duke's words from earlier drifted through his mind. He knew the story, knew that he couldn't kill Jason. That didn't matter to him. All he wanted was to be near Jessica and his daughter. Besides, he'd been doing pretty good so far. Campbell was out for the count. Maybe it would be enough, and if not, he could buy them time to escape. The choice was already made. He would die for them if it came down to it. He ran back out the dining area and took the Samaritan's keys from his right hip pocket. They dangled from a keychain that showed a picture of a huge set of bullhorns with the caption, Yeehaw, motherfucker, written beneath. He would have laughed if he wasn't so scared. He ran outside and climbed into the man's 4x4 pickup truck. He had to make up lost time. He pushed the gas pedals to the floor, fishtailing out onto the road, following his love. Okay, Slashaholics, this has been Chapter 16 of Jason Goes to Hell, the fan novelization by Jeremy Terry. Very action-packed chapter. I really enjoyed getting into the minds of the people that were in the diner when uh, Jason showed up as Roberts and uh, went on that killing spree. Uh, you got to see, I, th I believe, the most damage that any of the bodies that Jason took in this movie take. Like, this guy had been shot countless times pistols, uh, a fucking shotgun blast a few times, and finally he went down. Uh, the smile on his face, I feel like that was probably more the uh, demon voices or whatever that's in Jason's head, you know, just smiling at the killing. I loved the backstory that uh, Jeremy gave on Joey and Shelby. Uh, that's something me and him discussed before, you know, it's like, do you think that they were like best friends in school, and maybe made some type of pact, like if they hadn't found somebody by a certain age, that they would marry each other, and, uh, you know, it was pretty cool to find out that's what he went with, and not only that, but explain that over time, their relationship became something real, you know, they had a kid, uh, they ran the diner together, 
out of all the people that get killed in Jason Goes to Hell, the movie and especially the book here, um, I really hate that Shelby and Joey had to die, especially Shelby. Um, maybe I'm impartial because I just absolutely loved Leslie Jordan, the actor. He was just always so full of life and funny and nice and everything he did. Um, but yeah, great scene, great chapter. Jeremy did a great job keeping the tension high. Uh, good lead into the final upload uh, because the next upload of Jason Goes to Hell will be the conclusion of the book. It'll be chapter 17, 18 in the epilogue of Jason Goes to Hell. Um, can't wait to share it with you. I hope you all enjoyed uh, what's coming up. I hope you've enjoyed the book so far. I've seen many comments say they don't really care for the movie, but they've really enjoyed the book. I love the movie, and I also love what Jeremy's done with the novelization. Uh, and Adam, if you're listening to this in the future, uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. The writer and director, Adam Marcus, of... The movie Jason Goes to Hell is an acquaintance of mine, and I let him know about this project that Jeremy Terry was doing, and he was very excited for it. Uh, so it's going to be cool to maybe get his feedback on it one day. All right, drop us a comment. Let us know what you thought. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood 80 slasher librarian saying, thanks for listening, be excellent to each other, and remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Good night.